Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are discussing all about OB, maternal newborn class. <laughs> I have been asked tons of times to talk about my OB, uh, how I liked it, how things went, things that people should be aware of, um, what to study for, just certain things to know about the class that can help you succeed and how well I did. So that is all I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to cover everything you need to know. So keep watching. Okay, so something that I think is important to know about me, if you've watched any of my nursing videos, I am going into my fifth semester this fall. August 20th is my first day back before I finish off nursing school, but this past semester was the busiest for me. I had OB nursing, pediatric nursing, med surge two, and we also had a what is it called? It was like a communications class. So I had a lot on my plate. Those were three major classes to be balancing. So there was a lot going on taking these classes. Just so you guys have a little bit of an idea what I thought going into OB. OB has been what I have wanted to do since I was a little girl. You know, I've always thought like that was the career path for me. That's what I wanted to do. My aunt is also an OB nurse. So I've known a lot about it my whole life. Going into the class, I had very, very, very high expectations. I was very excited. The first day of class, I said, you know, this is what I wanna do. Very, very positive attitude going into the class. So that is how we started out. A lot of what I learned about OB right when it started was there's a lot of content. And that's obvious with most classes in nursing, like you're going to have very content heavy classes, there's a lot to know, and there's no possible way for them to cover everything you might need to know as an OB nurse. That's kind of like, it's just, it's just kind of like impossible. Like OB, pediatrics, anything specialty, it's impossible to cover everything you might need to know. So I knew that going in, there was gonna be a lot and it was gonna be content heavy, which made things difficult studying. So I just wanted to show you guys some of the things that I utilized in OB before I actually dig into material and content and some tips for you guys. This is my actual OB binder. So if you guys have seen my previous videos, you guys know that my binders can get pretty thick. This one wasn't too terrible. There's obviously a lot of stuff in here. Uh, basically all I have in the front is my syllabus and then I go into all of my tabs for all of the different content. So just to give you guys some examples, um, we started off in the beginning of class and we talked about a lot of definitions. I believe this was like the first day of class and I was so excited because I knew a lot of these uh, like LMP, estimated data delivery, gravita, term, para, um, all that good stuff, quickening, involution, fundus, and then like in the back we kind of talked more in depth about, you know, like breast engorgement, episiotomy, uh, perineum, lochia, the three types of lochia, like all of that stuff. So that's kind of how the class started out, was just like basic terms, covering basics, which was great. And then we kind of got more in depth and the categories went into about, I want to say we honestly, my lecture class would go, like we only had lecture once a week and then we obviously had clinical once a week. But I think that like we literally would like lecture one week, lecture one week, then we had a review for the test as a class, which was cool. Then we had a test. So I think we literally only had like, I think six major lectures, which was like a bunch of info crammed in like three hours, which seems like a lot, but it actually was not terrible. So that is kind of how the class was formatted. It We honestly would lecture for three hours and then we had a day uh, where we reviewed completely for the content and then took the exams. So when I say we only had two lectures like a month before the exam, I will kind of explain that. So the very first lecture we had was high risk newborn. So we spent an entire class period talking all about high risk newborn, you know, LGA, SGA, um, AGA, like all the basics. And if you don't know what that means, it means small for gestational age, average gestational age, average gestational age and large gestational age. Um, so just kind of like went into everything there is to know about a high risk newborn, someone who's having a baby that has maybe some higher risk things going on. Maybe they were um, coming out of the womb like drug addicted, like that kind of thing. So I'm not gonna go super in depth into the content because you're gonna take the class, but that was one lecture. And then the next lecture after that would be um, it would be normal newborn. Does that make sense? So I'm asking a question to a camera. So normal newborn, high risk newborn, and then we did high risk postpartum, normal postpartum, and then we had a test on normal labor and delivery, or normal labor and birth, high risk labor and birth, 
Um, and then I think the last one was antepartum. So we had antepartum part one, part two, and then there was like a part three. And then we also had all kinds of different things on like uh, STDs and diseases and stuff. So it was kind of broken up, basically pre-part or antepartum, um, intrapartum, postpartum. So basically talking everything there is to know. And then we also, during clinical, like we would have reviews at the end of clinicals where we would kind of discuss like different things like episiotomies and other things in pregnancy that we didn't get to discuss in class. Like for example, one of the things we talked about was uh, gestational diabetes. She didn't really get to cover that in class. Um, what else? Fetal loss. We didn't talk about that in class. Preterm labor. Fetal monitoring was huge. Uh, real life thermoregulation, real life postpartum hemorrhage, um, jaundice, phototherapy, all that stuff. So there's so much content to be covered in OB and it's a lot of what I kind of realized helped me the most was just consistently reviewing the content. Definitely a class where I needed to like read the book and I didn't. If you are some of my classmates, which I said that to some other kids and they're like, I didn't read the book and I got an A in the class. Like it all depends on the person, but she gave us a lot of reading assignments where I felt I needed to read the book, but that also depends on the teacher and what's going on. But I, th I felt like I was a book reader slash needed to understand the content myself before I could fully like embrace what was happening. Like, because it's one thing to know med surge really well, but it's a whole different ball game when you're adding in a baby and the menstrual cycle and the female reproductive system because it's a whole nother world. Like you have to think of things differently. You have to think of the newborn, you have to think of the mom, like there's two different patients. So it was a lot of critical thinking for me and I can tell you that this class was the one that I didn't do the hot, I mean, I did really well still. Like I got, a, I think I got, a, I think I got like an 89%. I was pretty salty, but this was the class that I didn't get an A in. And I, this was my lowest percentage, which 89, whatever. But it was my lowest out of med surge two and peds. I got higher in those classes. And the reason being is because when you have three major classes, you kind of have to balance out what you're studying for, right? So our tests would go, med surge two would be on a Monday. And then we would have a peds exam on a Thursday. And then we would have the OB exam the next Wednesday. You're probably sitting there thinking, wow, Holly, that's a lot of time to study for an OB exam, but sometimes it wouldn't be. Sometimes it would be, you would be so focused on one exam that it was hard to move, like move everything you just studied to, to go to OB. So OB probably got the less attention because I think I was a little more confident in myself than probably should have been. I thought like I knew the information a lot better, but I never did bad on a test or anything. It just, I didn't do as well as I wanted to. Because high, I wanted to get like an A plus in it, but that didn't happen. Um, some ways that I studied was I really, really enjoyed this ATI book. Uh, it's just the maternal newborn nursing one. They give this to you in nursing school. I don't know if you don't get it, if you even would want to buy it because I'm sure it's expensive. But I enjoyed going through and just kind of reading what, they're, what they had to say about it. Like if you look at a topic, you can look up like complications related to the labor process. Like I enjoyed going through my notes writing them out and then reading in the book, making sure that I understood it and then I would go read it somewhere else. I didn't do a whole lot of practice questions with this class because you kind of just needed to know your shit because the teacher was the one who kind of made the questions very specific to her. So I really just kind of needed to know the content myself. And for some classes that may be different, but I'll show you guys an example of what I did for studying for an exam. So. For example, this was for my high risk newborn slash normal newborn exam. And this right here is basically all of my notes that I rewrote out. I mean, this is the front of them. And then like, this is the back. Like I full blown rewrote out every little piece of my notes because that is what helps me learn. That is how I get it processed in my brain. And that's, that's honestly the way that I do the best. And everybody's different. Some people like no cards. Some people like, you know, just reading it to themselves. But for me, this is what worked. So there's a couple things you could do Quizlets on or some stuff like that. Like for like abnormal assessments, like there's Lanugo, there's Meconium, there's Meconium, Meconium Placenta, there's Malia, uh, acrocyanosis, like you could do um, Quizlet on that. But I just really felt like rewriting it out helped me the most. So that's how I succeeded in the class and did well uh, alongside just really, really knowing the content.
To give you guys some tips on what I would do to succeed in the class is know some basic areas. Be very familiar with the female reproductive system, and I mean that fully 100%. You know, understand the placenta, understand the vagina and how things work, understand uh, how birth actually occurs and there's a whole section on that obviously that you'll go through in your OB class But I thought that taking the time to actually understand how the birthing process worked Helped me understand a lot of things that were going on with baby with mom You know how the baby would have this how the baby would have that things that can happen that are complications after pregnancy Like why those things happened because of the female reproductive system and how it's set. Another thing to focus on is the menstrual cycle because obviously with pregnancy, the menstrual cycle is a huge part of that. So understanding how that worked and just kind of getting a really good gist of ovulation and you know when a baby can be conceived, how the egg is actually made, like produced and everything, that was really important to just know a basis of that. I also felt it was really, really good to know, which I wish I would have studied this a little bit more because I got a lot of questions on it and I didn't really study it that hard was this was sexually transmitted and other infections worksheet so it's standing for torch which stands for toxoplasmosis hepatitis syphilis rubella cytomegalovirus like all of those things and like all the different viruses really having an idea of how those work in pregnancy was huge because i didn't study them i kind of forgot they were like the extra thing we had to study on our own and i completely forgot to study them and i had a big mistake guys like i had to go back and study it on top of new content but really having the gist of that like if you want to study ahead right now and get that stuff under control do it because it's going to be questioned a lot in understanding like how it's transmitted like maternal signs and symptoms it's really really important because it's going to be different than your med surge symptoms that is a fact and also knowing obviously maternal effects versus fetal effects like you need to know both of those things so i'm just saying ob is just a different game it's just you got to learn you got to think about things in a whole new different way just like pediatrics I'm gonna talk about that today too. Okay, so just to talk a little bit about clinical, I'm just gonna mention it briefly. For my class, we had four different packets. We had a labor and birth packet, we had a newborn packet, a postpartum packet, and I think the other one was like a clinical packet, like for the off sites that we went to. So for the newborn packet, we basically, in our clinical, which we had our clinical every single week, once a week, and we had to basically fill out a whole packet on the newborn, which was like their APGAR, their, you know, all their different tests that they did, their weight, their, all of that stuff. So we filled out a packet on that. Then another one was the postpartum one where we basically did a whole thing on mom, and that was really cool. Really good learning experiences to fully get you engulfed and like thinking about, you know, this mom's postpartum state as well as newborn state. So I really enjoyed the packets. I felt like I learned a lot, but I also loved about this clinical was that we didn't have to do paperwork every single week, which is obviously different than my past. You know, in med surge, we had to do paperwork every week on our patient. It just kind of takes away from the learning for me. I really like focusing in on my patient focusing in on medications and understanding what's going on with them and it'll be especially is just like getting to observe and understanding how OB works was really awesome for me that was probably what I liked the most was not having tons of paperwork so as for my full experience with OB and how I felt walking out obviously because I mentioned at the beginning of this video this is what I have said I've wanted to do forever you know did it live up to my expectations and the answer is medium so I walked away from OB loving it I, I still truly have passion and heart and soul for OB I really really love it and if I could get a job right outside of school in OB I would be so incredibly happy and I would take it in a minute but there was a few different things that I noticed in my um, OB class that I did that kind of just like hurt my heart a little bit because it just kind of sucks being a student and only getting a little bit of experience that you don't fully get to see everything. Uh, there were a couple times that I had nurses that weren't super excited to have a student and you're going to have that everywhere but it's like when you're truly focused and like interested in the field that specific specialty it kind of sucks when you're asking questions and they just kind of look at you like yeah like obviously it's this like you know what i mean like that kind of thing so that kind of sucked but i do completely realize that that's just like a luck kind of thing it's not anything in the ob specifically but i yeah that was just kind of my experience it wasn't it wasn't like exceeded my expectations but it wasn't below my expectations either i really enjoyed it i loved the moms that i got to be with i really had all good patients and the babies learning newborn assessments i can say this is probably the class 
that I've learned the most in. I learned, you know, whole different world. Like I've said, OB is totally different than most other things. So really, really enjoyed it. Um, I hope some of those tips helped you guys. The other thing that I did do in OB that you guys asked a lot about was my case mom. Uh, and I should get it out here, but it's all confidential information, obviously. Uh, case mom was basically a situation, and I don't know if every school does this, but we were to be assigned to kind of pick a day and you were going to be one-on-one -on -one with a mom and a nurse and you were doing nothing but observing. And this was the full labor process, the full birth process. Um, the beginning, you had to stay two hours after the birth and if it was a C-section, eight hours after. So this meant that if your mom was in labor for 24 hours, you were there for 24 hours. This didn't happen to me. I had an amazing case mom. She was six hours in and out. She It was her fourth child, so super fast delivery so it was super cool didn't have to stay there all day but i had a lot of friends who were at the hospital for like 36 hours and i'm like that's a long time but that experience was a lot of learning you literally documented every single thing about the birth you know you had to write like the paper was like 30 pages i think or something like that like it's a whole binder and that was like a hundred and some points so that was probably the biggest project of OE for me and it's not as bad as people make it sound but it's just a lot of work but that was another part of OB and yeah all right guys I hope that that kind of helped to kind of explain my experience with OB again I really enjoyed the class I think that it's a huge learning curve it's everybody needs to take it obviously in nursing school you're required but Really, really think about it when you're taking OB because there's always going to be pregnant people in every single specialty. You're going to have them in the ER, the ICU, everywhere you're going to have pregnant moms. So understanding the way of the way things work and how many things are incorporated into OB because OB is exciting. It's critical care. It's, you know, relationships. It's, it can be sad at times. It can be horrible at times, but it's really a place that kind of contributes all different specialties into one. So yeah, I... I think that's all I have to say about the class. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this helps somebody. I hope it maybe got you excited for OB because you should be excited for OB. Go in with a full heart. Go in with an open mind and be excited to learn, you guys. Don't let anybody put you down in this class. Give it everything you have, everything you possibly have. Learn everything you can and you're gonna do fantastic and I believe in you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.